This is Kite Cutter TV with another presentation. We got to talk about this. Okay, guys, Joe Biden is now in office. I don't like it. Many of you don't like it. But the fact remains, sometimes as a nation, when you turn your back against God, God gives the people what they want. I've got this book called Rulers of Evil, and the book is basically about people that deserve to be ruled by evil rulers because of the policies and the people that they elect into office. Now, what's going on now with Biden in office with this new wave of illegal immigration and migrant caravans, everybody's coming out thinking that Biden is basically a savior for illegal immigration and asylum seekers. Many of those asylum seekers have false asylum claims, by the way. And now to them, Joe Biden coming in is like a savior. And he's coming out with all of these executive orders with transgenders in the military and also trying to make a pathway for citizenship for over 11 million illegal immigrants, which for me is probably double that number by now, at least 20 to 30 million illegal immigrants run around. And the Democrats use these people as pawns to get more votes. And this is just a way that they can hold on and stay in power. Check this out. Border Patrol agents arresting 60 people at a motel in McAllen this morning, all in the country illegally. Border Patrol agents, along with McAllen PD and other law enforcement agencies, found the undocumented migrants in eight different rooms at a Motel 6 near the expressway in 8th Street. Among the group, nine unaccompanied children. Authorities say the individuals are from Mexico, El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. The caretaker has not been identified. But the transnational criminal organizations, the smugglers, will use a number of different locations to, uh, to stash illegal aliens. The 60 individuals found today in McAllen were taken to a border patrol station for processing. It's been more than three years since Guatemalan immigrant Lucio Perez took sanctuary at an Amherst church to avoid deportation. 22 News reporter Hector Molina is live from our Hampshire County Bureau after speaking with him and others living in sanctuary across the country. Well, Sierra, now that President Biden is in office, Lucio and many others living in sanctuary are hoping that Biden's administration will help them be able to live free and reunite with their families. Now that we have a new president that will, who has chosen to give us an opportunity. An opportunity that Guatemalan immigrant Lucio Perez and many others have been waiting years for. Perez has been seeking sanctuary for more than three years at the First Congregational Church in Amherst as a way to avoid deportation. Since President Biden has made immigration reform a priority since day one in office, Perez and many others all over the country have a new hope. He and dozens living in sanctuary all over the nation spoke virtually today, asking for freedom. The president, now that he has the power to take us seriously, because we just want for them to give us the freedom to be freely outside, to be able to walk outside without fear and to enjoy our family more than anything. While President Biden's plans for immigration reform includes stopping border wall construction, preserving the DACA program, and allowing undocumented individuals to apply for temporary legal status with the ability to apply for green cards after five years, those on today's call said they have yet to hear Biden speak specifically about those living in sanctuary. However, Lucio and others in his situation hope Biden's administration can provide the light at the end of the tunnel. We want to see the facts. We don't want just false words because it has truly been difficult for us. And according to the National Sanctuary Collective, about 50 families currently have relatives living in sanctuary. Working for you tonight from our Hampshire County Bureau in Northampton, Hector Molina, 22 News. Well, two women living in sanctuary here in Central Ohio are hoping orders from the new president mean they could hopefully go home soon. Today, community leaders asking customs enforcement for a stay of deportation for Edith Espinal and Miriam Vargas. NBC4's Catherine Ross explaining why supporters say today's request feels a little different. Supporters for Edith Espinal and Miriam Vargas say that they're hopeful about the incoming administration. And after conversations with ICE agents here, they say they're cautiously optimistic. The signs and supporters outside of the Immigration and Customs Office Tuesday have stayed consistent over three years. And it's not the first time they've requested stays of removal for the two women. We feel like it's a new day and it's a new time and it's time for them 
to be able to leave Sanctuary and to go home. Edith Espinal has been living in Sanctuary at a Columbus church for more than three years. Miriam Vargas, more than two. The two undocumented immigrants unable to set foot outside without risking deportation. Many of us got a taste of what that's like during the pandemic. Tuesday, City Councilman Emmanuel Ramey and local faith leaders are asking ICE to let the women go home. Newly sworn in President Joe Biden says he's halted deportations for 100 days. The assistant field office director here says during that time, arresting Edith and Miriam would not be a priority. He gave his personal assurance that none of his officers would be waiting outside the sanctuaries, nor would they be waiting outside their homes. Leaders here say it's a start. I think we have every right to still be skeptical. Um, and until we get a for sure word, nothing is nothing certain. And until they get more clarification, supporters plan to push for a long-term solution. We are here for this stay of removal application that will give them the ability to be home and to start a life um, well beyond that 100 days. Columbus City Council plans to write an official letter to Senator Brown and Congresswoman Beatty, and they're encouraging supporters to write their own letters and make calls to their offices as well. Local Free in Westerville, Capitol Ross, NBC4. CBP concerned about a recent wave of human smuggling. And they're especially concerned about what they're seeing at one checkpoint. Channel 5's John Paul Barajas reports. Hiding people crossing into the country illegally to get them further up north is nothing new and still common. Border Patrol agents say they saw a wave of it in the summer and now are seeing another. Would you, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Look, uh, I'm not a cop, but I'll give you $1,000 a head. You can take these people to the other side of the border. With 38 years on the road under his belt, this type of interaction is almost routine for Stephen Williams. A random guy comes up and does the hey mister routine. Customs and Border Patrol says that a lot of times the drivers will know when they're human smuggling. Other times they won't. The people will wait till the driver gets off the truck, they'll get a bite to eat or use the restroom and then try to sneak onto the truck in areas like this where the spare tire is usually held. Williams adds he's never had anyone sneak onto his truck that he knows of, but that a lot of other drivers have said they've seen it happen or it's happened to them. So every time you stop, you make sure to go through all the, all the checks. I don't like the idea of going to jail. How's that sound? Nothing in there that's not supposed to be. Constantly checking your truck is what CBP wants others to do as well. This month, in a one-week period, they had 20 stops of human smuggling on commercial vehicles, 16 at the Falfurias checkpoint and four at the Kingsville. They had 16 stops at one checkpoint in seven days is rare and is why they're pushing this reminder. If you have a commercial driver's license and you're convicted of alien smuggling, you will lose your license for life. Agent Dustin Arajo explains that's made possible by the state's Texas Hold'em initiative. If you're stopped not knowing you have extra passengers, your penalties won't be that severe, but it will take a while to prove and could cause delays in shipment arrival times. Start moving drugs and you're moving people like that, you deserve what you get. Because you're screwing it up for everybody. Like I said, John Paul Barajas, Channel 5 News. President Joe Biden's early moves on immigration signal his determination to learn from past efforts to reform the system. His efforts could have a profound effect on millions of dreamers and immigrants, many of them here in Florida. Joining us right now live about these measures is Renata Castro via Zoom. She's the founder of the Castro Legal Group. Uh, Renata, thanks for joining us tonight. These first moves I want to talk about from President Biden seem like a major step in the right direction direction, at least for the dreamers, the people you represent. That's right, Jane. Biden, in a, in a show of force and commitment to his campaign promises, on day one presented a, a very comprehensive bill that not only provides status to dreamers, but also to anyone who is currently in the United States without legal immigration status uh, at the current time. So Biden showing a very audacious, a very um, unexpected immigration bill, and dreamers are a part of that. An eight-year path seems like a long time, but a lot would have to be done. Take us through the process. 
Well, one thing that needs to be understood is that even though dreamers dream of becoming U.S. citizens, more than anything, they want a green card. They want the ability to reside permanently in the United States. Uh, even though this is just a bill and it will be chopped and it will be put together again, we expect this bill to have a pathway for a green card and then to citizenship for kids who were brought to the United States under the age of 16 before June 15, 2007, which is the initial shape of the program from the Obama administration. However, much has been discussed about whether or not we should be providing a pathway to status for the parents of these dreamers who brought them to the United States. And that's going to be a tough pill to swallow for the Senate and for Congress, for Democrats and uh, Republicans alike. Renata, real quick, what do you think the chances are then that these changes will pass Congress? I think that we certainly will have a bill uh, legalizing permanently dreamers, but I don't think that this bill, this audacious bill that Biden has presented stands a chance. All right, Renata Castro, immigration attorney, thanks again for your time and your insight into the changes. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, God bless. Peace.